There's a fresh warning out today on climate change and the effect it's having on the planet. A new study suggests sea levels are rising faster than previously thought. The research is published in the British journal Nature Climate Change. It shows that the level of ocean water has risen between 2.6 and 2.9 millimeters each year for the past 20. That contradicts previous reports that said the rate had actually slowed. According to the author of this latest study, he used new, more precise satellite technology. His conclusion is in line with the UN Intergovernmental Panel on, Panel on Climate Change. It recently said that the sea level has risen 8 inches since 1880. By 2100, it could rise by nearly a meter if greenhouse gas emissions continue to melt glaciers and ice sheets near the Earth's poles. John Englander is author of High Tide on Main Street, Rising Sea Level and the Coming Coastal Crisis. Great to have you with us. Nice to be here. So I want to start with your reaction to these findings, uh, and there may be some robust discussion about uh, you know, what they show, but the fact that we are seeing what appears to be a persistent increase in sea levels, uh, what did you think when you, when you heard this? Well, the, uh, the research that was published yesterday out of Australia clarifies a really infinitesimal accuracy in the satellite data. Satellite data for sea level goes back about 20 years. It started in 1992. And what they've done is realize that, that the position of the satellite as it travels around the world daily, that there was a really a, an extremely infinitesimal calculation uh, correction needed for where it was in relation to the global tide cycle. And, uh, and we're talking really hundreds of a millimeter. I mean, almost imperceptible when you think of the world's ocean and doing this from a satellite. But the, the implications of that are twofold, as, as you alluded to. One is it means that perhaps the rate of rise the last century was 2.9 or 2.6 millimeters rather than 3.2. Again, if you look at a millimeter on, a, on any ruler, we're talking about an extremely tiny distance to begin with, and now we're talking about hundreds of that. So it's really not significant from a practical standpoint. But the other implication of it, it means that the rate of rise is actually increasing. Because what we're doing is comparing the accuracy of that satellite record of 23 or 24 years to 100 years or so of tide gauges. Now tide gauges were designed to measure tides. They were never really intended to track sea level rise. And they're, most of them are fairly coarse measurements. They're, um, an old technology, but they're being updated. So it's really just a, almost a, um, a, a, an infinitesimal accuracy cor uh, improvement and, and uh, that's what we keep doing. And of course, you've written about uh, the fact that this is going on, that the rate has increased uh, in our century. And as you say, it is a subject that you, every now and then we talk about, you know, an, an island in the Indian Ocean that will disappear at some point. Um, but we're also now starting to see weather effects, uh, places uh, like lower Manhattan or, or New Jersey, um, uh, entire states like Louisiana, that are sort of seeing a, a change in kind of their water levels. Is that related, first of all, to the rise sea levels or is that some other effect uh, that we could point to and will that uh, if it is related to rising sea levels will it heighten the consciousness of these issues well great question so I think we have to distinguish a couple of things the uh, storm surge which we tend to think about for New Orleans or what happened with Hurricane Sandy is a we know what a storm event is and that's on top of sea level rise but is, is rather of different magnitudes and and of course uh, you know it's a, it's an unpredictable event sea level comes from three things basically. It's the amount of ice on the planet, which is primarily in Greenland and Antarctica. Together they hold about 210 feet or 70 meters of sea level rise potentially if it all melted. Uh, then the glaciers are a much smaller aspect of that ice on land as it melts. The second component is much smaller, but as the oceans warm, which they're continuing to do, they get a little bit bigger, like most substances, if you think of metal parts that in the wintertime don't fit properly, it's because most substances expand or contract tiny, tiny amounts. And the ocean is rising from thermal expansion of the seawater as it warms. That's the second component. And then the biggest variation in many places is that the land goes down or up fractions of an inch, just as the ocean is moving higher fractions of an inch. And so that may offset or increase the amount of effective sea level. So we need to take those three things into account. The amount of ice that's melting, the expansion of seawater as the oceans warm over the last century, and then in, from region to region or location to location, the amount of subsidence 
right. the amount of land has gone down. So one thing that will happen, of course, as, sea, as the oceans warm, which they're obviously doing, as you say, uh, if they're expanding, is acidification. Uh, if you had to guess, if we don't change course, if there's not some kind of major difference uh, in greenhouse gas emissions, for instance, uh, will, we, uh, will we see coastal uh, areas disappearing before we make ourselves extinct because there's no <laughs> algae in the oceans? Or will, uh, do we have time uh, for the acidification problem? Wow. Okay, well, let's deal with the, 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 there's two aspects which are totally connected. They both from, come from uh, elevated amounts of carbon dioxide that's now 40% higher than in the past millions of years. So acidification is a direct impact as you dissolve carbon dioxide in the oceans, they become less alkaline or more acidic. And that's a very serious effect, as you've alluded to, that could change the whole ocean food chain and the production of oxygen from microalgae. So that's really important. That's probably going to happen you know, over centuries or thousands of years, but it is an ominous concern. Sea level rise breaks down into two, two time frames. In the next 10 or 20 years, sea level is going to continue to get a little bit worse. But the really bad stuff that could happen is in the second half of the century or the next century when those ice sheets in Antarctica and Greenland really could get into what we call a collapse mode. Hmm. And that's when we could get many feet of sea level rise. Okay, we've only got about 30 seconds, John, but um, we talk about these issues. Uh, I'm just assuming that you make a connection between greenhouse gas emissions uh, and these phenomena, but maybe I shouldn't. Is there a connection? And if there is, can we uh, head it off? Well, absolutely, there's a connection. The uh, carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere used to vacillate between 180 and 280 parts per million. It's now at 400 parts per million and climbing straight up because of the uh, emissions from fossil fuels burning. That causes the acidification of the ocean. It also increases the temperature of the planet. We're one and a half degrees Fahrenheit or 0.85 Celsius warmer. Those things are all connected. We do need to slow the warming as quickly as possible going to renewable fuels. We also need to begin adapting to sea level rise, which is now unstoppable. Hmm. We must try and slow it, but it's unstoppable. All right, and obviously that's a, a whole other conversation. I hope we can have it at some point. John, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you, Amanda.